The story of a phantom hitchhiker has been a classic ghost tale for centuries and tells of a lost soul, usually a woman, who asks to be driven away from the location they have found. Halfway through the journey, however, the driver glances over at their passenger and is chilled to the bone to discover the mysterious woman has vanished. In some accounts, the story extends to the driver visiting the location the ghost asked them to go, out of curiosity, and are met by living family members of the spirit, who explain that their daughter died in a car accident years before, and a lost soul has often begged drivers to take her home. I'm Bleaky, and in today's video we take a look at the case of the Bluebell Hill Ghost, the real life story of a phantom hitchhiker that has not only been witnessed by many people, but is also believed to be the spirit of a poor girl who lost her life in a well-documented crash on a stretch of road in the UK. Accounts of a phantom hitchhiker have been reported all over the world, with some believing that it has its roots embedded in folklore. While it would be fair to believe that phantom hitchhikers have only been reported since the invention of the motor car, there are actually some much older accounts. For example, a Swedish author, Joan Petri Clint, documented a case from 1602 and tells of a girl who asked a man riding a horse-drawn cart for a lift. When the party stopped to rest the horses, however, the girl shared a prophecy and faded away. From this account, the story of the phantom hitchhiker has evolved, with others sharing similar tales. Throughout the years, it has been used as a form of entertainment in taverns and schoolyards, with different cultures having their own variations of the story. In the UK, phantom hitchhiker stories are usually a victim of a tragic accident, while in other countries, the spirit is a demon, god, witch or fairy. To give you an example, in Malaya, people believe in the Lang Suya, which is a vampire that wanders stretches of road disguised as a beautiful woman. After batting its eyelids and tempting drivers, the creature then assaults them and flies into the air, letting out a blood-curdling scream. Another famous case comes from Switzerland and tells the story of an older woman, all dressed in white, who stands on the hard shoulder of her road, which is illegal in Switzerland. The location where she is most sighted is at the entrance to a long tunnel called the Belgian Tunnel. When drivers offer the distressed looking woman a lift through the tunnel and off the dangerous part of the road, the woman accepts and gets in. During the drive, however, the woman starts to look pale and ill, telling the driver that she doesn't feel well and that something terrible is about to happen. When the driver asks what does she mean, the woman instantly vanishes. There are four distinct types of accounts when it comes to phantom hitchhikers. These are the ones that give the address of their former home, the ones that give prophecies to their drivers like the one in Switzerland, the ghost that borrows or leaves an article of clothing in the car, or demons or gods disguising themselves as lost spirits in order to make their victims put their guard down. When it comes to the Bluebell Hill ghost, however, it seems that the young woman who lost her life appears to offer a warning to the drivers. Bluebell Hill is a 30 mile long stretch of road in Kent, found in the southeast of England. In fact, those familiar with the area will know it as the A229 road, which is best known by locals for its paranormal and terrifying occurrences. The sightings of the Bluebell Hill ghost began shortly after a dreadful car accident. On the night of November 19th, 1975, Susan Brown, Judith Lingham and Patricia Ferguson were driving down Bluebell Hill when the group suddenly lost control of their car, which caused it to violently swerve into an oncoming Jaguar. The force of the crash left a mangled metal heap and the horrifically battered bodies of the three young women in the middle of the road. While only one of the girls was instantly killed, the other two passed away within a week at Maidstone Hospital. The press romanticised the story to make it more impactful, claiming that it was Susan who died on the road, who was set to marry RAF technician Brian Wetton the following day. In actuality, it was her friend Judith that lost her life, with her spirit believed to be trapped on the lonely road after such a traumatic death. On that fateful Friday evening, the women were heading towards Maidstone. Susan, an Australian-born shorthand typist, was driving her friends to the Running Horse pub in Maidstone to meet their boyfriends. Judith was in the front passenger seat, and Patricia was in the back. Judith was killed almost instantly, with Patricia passing away an hour later and Susan on the following Wednesday. 
A photographer from Maidstone Gazette, Mike Pollard, was on his way home when he encountered the carnage and he took some harrowing pictures of the crash scene. One year after the accident, sightings of the ghost were reported, which was believed to be that of Judith trying to hitch a ride to Maidstone, confused to why her friends in the car had suddenly left her. Blind switchboard operator Tom Harbour began collecting information of the reports in 1968 who became frustrated that no substantial evidence could be obtained to prove the haunting. Strangely, members of Judah's family have shared accounts of drivers turning up at the family home, telling them that they had given a lift to a girl asked to be driven to this location, but vanished during the journey. This, of course, fits in with the urban legend of other phantom hitchhiker accounts. In 1971, Mr. James Skeen, and again in 1972 with Mr. Bob Vanderpeer, both men reported to have given a young woman a ride. However, when they got to the destination, she vanished as she left the vehicle. There were a couple more accounts of the Bluebell Hill ghost during the following years, but nothing substantial. That is until 1974, when the phenomenon began happening more and more. One of the creepiest was when a man hit a young girl on the road and placed a blanket over the stunned and badly injured woman. He then ran to the local police station to get help, but by the time he had returned, only his blanket was left. The police checked hospitals and reached out to the community, but the injured girl was never found. The Kent Messenger began putting together all the ghost stories to date in an article by Nigel Nelson called Drivers Beware the Phantom on the Hill. Man, his titles are as overly dramatic as mine. Another encounter was reported in the Evening Post on Tuesday, August 30th, 1977, when two men claimed to have seen a blonde woman in a white evening dress, in a dishevelled state, waiting for a lift. The men didn't stop, but later reported it as being unusual. What makes this interesting is that they were from another part of the country and had no idea of the hill's haunted history. The activity went quiet between 1977 and November 1992, until a terrifying account sparked a series of sightings. A man only known as Mr S was driving down Bluebell Hill when he suddenly saw a young woman run out from the central reservation in front of him. The girl looked him directly in the eye before vanishing into the bonnet. The car skidded to a halt and the frantic man searched beneath the car and the area close to it. No person was found. He was so shaken by the encounter that he went to the Maidstone police station to report what had happened the police found no injured girl at the scene. On another occasion that was reported in the Kent Today newspaper on January 8th, 1993, a family was driving home at around 12.45am up the old Chatham Road. All of the people in the car saw a haggard old woman walking very slowly across the road in front of them. As it was a foggy night, they were not going fast, and as they got close to the woman, she turned and hissed at them. The father of the family tore himself away from the fear and sped away. As they did, they all saw the figure waving a bundle of sticks at them. The story was later confirmed by a policeman who spent the whole night trying to calm the family down. Since the awful accident, the stretch of road around Bluebell Hill has been the location of many haunted accounts. On some occasions, while drivers are speeding down the isolated road, they have witnessed a young woman appear right in front of their car. As they stop and get out, fearing that they've run somebody over, there is no trace of her body, just a long stretch of road leading away and towards them. On another occasion, drivers have been suddenly hit with the sound of screams, screeching tyres and crunching metal. Could this be the last moments of the three girls being played out to warn drivers not to speed on the dangerous road? One man who ran into the Bluebell Hill ghost was coach driver Ian Sharp, who saw the ghost just over a week before the anniversary of the terrible car crash. In an interview, Ian explained that he had come out of the Bluebell Hill slip road from the village coming down the hill. As he did, he saw a woman who he thought would not cross the road. He was wrong. In a snap moment, she stepped in front of the car. He quickly got out, and like all the other accounts, there was no sight of the young woman. To date, there have been more than 90 recorded incidents of travellers on the A229 seeing a phantom hitchhiker, most of which described a woman with similar features to that of Judith Lingham. So, are all these sightings of the spirit Judith, or could there be a more earthly explanation to all the sightings of the phantom hitchhiker of Blue Bell Hill? There's always the possibility of hallucinations when driving along roads at night, especially when drivers are overly tired. Driving at night has been proven to induce a form of sensory deprivation, which can increase the chance of hallucination. If people know of the haunting and the awful accident, 
the subconscious could play havoc and form a sighting. What is interesting about this case, however, is how people have stopped, driven, and even talked to the woman before she vanished. A hallucination can't create that level of interaction, especially as often as seen in the case of the Blue Bell Hill ghost. So, is the spirit of Judith Lingham doomed to wander the roads around Bluebell Hill, longing to finish the journey she and her best friend set out on in 1965? Or are the 90 accounts nothing more than driver's fatigue and paranoia caused by local legend? Let me know in the comments section below. I would like to thank subscriber Englaster for suggesting this story, and if you have any local paranormal stories you would like me to cover, I'm open to suggestions. Oh, and remember, if you're ever in the opportunity to help a hitchhiker in the dead of night, don't be surprised if they've vanished into thin air by the time you look over at them. If you enjoyed this video and would like to watch more supernatural and paranormal content, please make sure you hit the subscribe button and ring the notification bell. You can also follow any updates over on Instagram. And until next time, sleep well friends.